So I'm on the good old site of AliExpress, and I found myself a hard disk adapter to DDR. And basically what we're looking at here is a DDR4 to M.2 adapter. I don't know how this even works because if you look at the traces here, it looks like it's all going to this, like, I want to say like SATA power thing. This might just be like a, um, like a holder almost, except all the bottom here has like metal pins on there. Either this all is connected to the ground layer, which is going to short your board and make it shut off, or it's all connected to, which I don't see any traces for, uh, it's all going to be connected to here. Like all this is, looks like it's just a mounting spot. It's quality. Oh boy, you know it's bad. But this is the DDR4 version. So let's see, what do we have down here? DDR interface design. Easy install and secure. Fully gold plated. External power supply provides more power. The supply uses two imported large capacitors to make the power supply more stable. And notice it doesn't even provide us any examples, like with actual stuff in there. Yeah, it's basically just a M.2 to SATA adapter, probably. I just, I don't know why everything's got pins on here. Like if you're going to make this like a dummy, don't even include pins on there. Don't save the money on that. I am really curious to see what this actually looks like, what this actually works like, and if this is even usable. Like, I mean, yeah, I thought this maybe we might be able to use our SSD as RAM. Wouldn't it be cool to have a terabyte of SSD RAM? There is like actual like Intel obtained persistent memory, which is basically like, kind of what's talking about here where it basically acts as like ssd storage and it keeps your ram contents after you shut down your computer um this is actually some really cool stuff that i've had the pleasure of working with so it's really cool but i do not believe that that is this um there's there's no there's no way especially with no traces even going down to here i find it highly unlikely let's go through and uh once we go through and add this to our cart. Well, I finally got my RAM to M.2 adapter. I think we need a couple things first. First things first is an old M.2 drive. This is a SATA based one, so it should work fine. Uh, let's give this a shot. So there it is right there. Let's open this bad boy up. See what we get. So I have low confidence that this is actually going to work. Most notably is the fact that we do we even have a screw in here somewhere. They're so freaking cheap. They don't even give you the screw to screw in the, they give you a screwdriver, but not the screw. So it has a B key SSD, which means you can slide it in like that, pop it down, use the SATA ports on here access the SSD. Kind of stupid because this is A, I've never seen RAM that has slots like that. Also, this is basically just a holder because ultimately this goes off to your motherboard. You've got some power delivery and some kind of like, but other than that, you really don't have much going on here. This is a pretty barren board in terms of traces. You've got power delivery traces, like a main power delivery trace that goes to the board, or goes to the M.2 drive, uh, from the power circuitry here, which is not a lot. And then you've got your primary uh, data connections here, which goes to the M.2 drive, which compared to, I believe, like 20 some pins that the M.2 form factor slot has versus a SATA, which has like, what, seven? You're looking at pretty much um, a pretty big drop off. So that this was advertised as a DDR2 M.2 SSD adapter. Yeah, so the main problem, of course, you might have already noticed by now as well, is that on the bottom here, there is absolutely no contacts for the RAM, which means there is highly unlikely that there is a way to transfer DDR to RAM and well, M.2 SATA to RAM and back and forward without any contacts to go in there. So, uh, first off, let's plug it in, see what we actually get. Keying-wise, it looks like it was designed for, even though I paid extra money, the DDR4 option, it looks like it includes space for both DDR3 and DDR2. 
I just realized that. This is a DDR3 motherboard. Not DDR4, which I paid my money for, but... Okay, here we go. It's giving me an error now. Okay. And now it's not, like, the thing that just, like, surprises me the most is the fact that, like, this has nothing that's changing, really, in terms of the RAM. Besides, like, the RAM slot just pressing down the pins. So it makes me very curious why this is just, like, by putting something in that slot that really shouldn't have any conductivity. It's causing, like, the RAM slot to short out. Like, it, it makes me wonder, like, was there some, like, quality concern? Is there something, like, like, this just seems really cheaply done if that shorting if a pcb with no contacts is shorting it out like is the the trace layers like making contact on the surface like is it all just short out i'm gonna try popping this out real quick so we know that the fact is that this thing does not actually do anything with the ram there's no traces on the side here so i am going to now try without it in the slot like this is such a weird thought to me that like this does not like, by adding something to a SATA adapter, it's causing the computer not to boot. I'll have to do some more testing, but I believe I can't actually boot the computer anymore. Which is odd, because 6.7 usually refers to a RAM issue. But this is clearly not really doing anything with the RAM. So I'm curious, like, on the side here, if there's, like, issues with traces or something. Because, like, I, 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 like, it's, it's see-through, which means, like, there shouldn't be any traces. I mean, there is a couple. But, like, it's see-through, so, like, there's, there's no, there's no traces you would think after a certain point. It's just, it, it, it blows me away that, like, there is no traces on the motherboard contact. Yet, it's clearly having issues, so... But for this to just go straight up and fry the computer is kind of odd to say the least. It's got no way to make contact with the RAM socket, so the only way it could fry the computer is by utilizing the SATA. So I've never seen a SATA USB killer. I've seen like USB killers that like basically just go through and they take like, you know, the power from a USB drive or the, the 5 volt from the USB and pump it up and then shoot it back into the data pins. but. This is, this is like, not likely. There's not much circuitry, there's not much inductors, there's not much anything like that. It's just two capacitors and, uh, let's see, a MOSFET. So it's not like it's doing much. I, I mean, looking at the facts, my computer doesn't turn on anymore. Um, for it to get all the way through post beforehand, and now it's not even turning on, it definitely does raise some questions about, like, you would think this is just a stupid adapter. Like, maybe... Like, there's very likely that something could be wrong with my computer, but that would be some weird timing for it to go like that. Like, I just, I don't understand it. For it to take the the input here and shoot it maybe through the SATA lines. But, like, that's very mischievous and meanly done for an $11 product. Well, yes, it's, like, wrong to advertise something as something that can't exist. There's no way you can get an M.2 drive to go through your, 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 your DDR pens. That's just such an odd thing to happen with only utilizing the SATA, like you can make a SATA computer killer, like a, a fake SATA drive now. I mean like this is literally just two capacitors and a MOSFET, like this doesn't even have any of the circuitry to fry anything, so I, I'm, I'm at a complete loss on what's going on here. That just, it, 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 it makes me very curious on like what the logic is behind this. Like USB drive, maybe, that's portable. But like a, a, a SATA drive, that's that's just like pure malicious. There's no fun to having a USB killer because USB killer kind of makes sense. It's portable. You'd have to have serious access and it just makes it extremely impractical to go through and do it that way. I'm going to futz around with my computer. I'm going to pin a comment if I ever get this thing working again because um, it could very well be something's wrong. Um, if you don't see a pinned comment, then it's at least explaining that the computer went down or that I got it back and working. Um, you know what happened, and I think that's absurd. Th why would you just make a killer that's in a M. or a M. two slash SATA slash DDR form factor? Because there's no pins on this; it's not doing much. It just makes no sense. 
So thank you very much for watching. Subscribe if you like investigation of scams like this. And uh, we'll see you guys next time in the next video. Goodbye.